So, what's up guys? It's the Hot Man a Minute YouTube channel. This is Brother Craig. And Craig and I both have struggled with pharmacia and sorcery. I was addicted to heroin, Craig. Look right here. What is it? How much is that? Uh, that's, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, 50 or 100 sabots, and I don't know. And Easy. how long have you been clean right now, Craig? Attacks. I've been clean 37 days. Craig got set free by the Lord Jesus Christ and some demons were casted out of him. Praise the Lord Jesus. We broke that cord of sorcery and pharmacia. So David says in the Bible, he says, I hate those that hate thee, O Lord. I hate them with a perfect hatred. There's a spirit behind these drugs here. And what we're doing right now, we're blowing these drugs up with this here tannerite. And we're going to send these spirits back to the pit and the abyss where they belong. So what Craig's doing is he's taking hundreds and thousands of dollars of drugs right now. And mixing it in with tannerite, and we're gonna blow this up. I know, I'm just gonna do this. <laughs> um, and, and what did the Lord do for you this time? And uh, this time, uh, I 100% felt the demonic energy leave my body when uh, the Lord utilized uh, uh, Matthew's uh, uh, capabilities of uh, getting the demons to flee from me, cast them out, deliverance, whatever you wanna call it. And I 100% felt that. Uh, and felt the demons leave. And then amazingly, after that, I did not have the serious withdrawals, the serious depression, Amen. and all the serious things that uh, caused me to go back to the drugs in the past. Now, granted, it's been, what, 36 days or 36 seven? days since some demons came out so of it's actually Here's his Friday, last of the So praise the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're struggling with drugs, alcohol, anything, Email us at freebibles, the number four in the letter U at gmail.com, and we'll call you. We'll do deliverance prayers. We'll meet up with you, whatever you're wanting to do. But know this, you can't force this on anybody. I know there's a lot of parents watching this that want their children to get clean and sober. The children have to want, the person has to want to be clean and sober also. Put it all in there. Every last little drop. If, you, if somebody gets deliverance and goes back to these things, seven worse demons come into the first, okay? Jesus teaches us that. So you have to want to get freedom, and if you want freedom, Jesus Christ will set you free. Amen? <laughs> all right so i'm asked to give a testimony i know that what i went through was not for just cheap carnal pleasures of the flesh it was for more it was to save other people it was to help other people it was for me to learn and grow and become a better person and number one to find jesus jesus finds me and uh saves me with his blood and uh gives me the indwelling of the holy spirit uh you know that's number one for me is salvation for sure and i hope that you feel conviction such that you can find salvation if you have not already found salvation that being said i lived the life that i thought everybody should dream of i had everything i always wanted I had a business that made money whether I was there or not. I had a $3 million fishing boat with a captain and a mate that ran all over the world from Bermuda to Mexico to the Bahamas to Dominican Republic. We chased blue marlins, and we caught a lot of blue marlins. We did a lot of drugs. We had a lot of fun that we thought was fun at the time, but in retrospect, wasn't so fun. We laughed a lot. We smiled a lot, but were we truly happy? Was it joy? Was it peace? Was it gentleness? Was it the spirits of the Holy? Was it the Holy Spirit's gifts? Um, no, it was not. It was, it was flesh, desires. It was of the devil. It was lust. It was not of God. And looking back on it, it's easy to see, but when you're caught up in it, you think you're living the life of, you know, that, that everybody else would want to live. 
Uh, but that being said, what goes along with that are hangovers and bad mornings when you've been out drinking all night and doing drugs all night. And then all of a sudden you figure out that opioids can help those mornings out. So all of a sudden you've got a magic pill. You can take some opioids and not experience the hangover. So it's a win-win. You're winning everywhere. You've got everything you want. You can go out drinking and doing cocaine all night and then do opioids the next day and feel great the next morning and go fishing at 6 in the morning and fish all day and drink all day and drink all night. So it's a 24-7 fiasco. But then what happens is the opioids require more and more. You start out with these little five milligram Percocets and then you move to the tens and then it's multiple tens and then it's 10 tens and then it's 14 tens a day and you're snorting them and you're snorting them with Adderall because you gotta get higher and higher and higher. Uh, if you stay where you're at, you feel terrible. You gotta keep adding to it. Year after year, you're adding pill after pill. And then if there's any pain in your life, you can just melt it away with the opioids. That being said, then you find out that there's a new drug for you. It's called Subutex or Suboxin. And it takes the place of the opioids and it keeps you from going up and down and up and down all day. And it keeps you on an even keel. And that's the drug that the doctors say, hey, if you've got a problem with opioids, you need to just camp out on Suboxin or Subutex the rest of your life. Well, that's what I was told, and uh, I started doing Subutex because it was in a pill form that I could crush and snort along with Adderall. So I was able to have it all again. You know, we keep trying to have it all the way the devil wants you to have it all, and then it, it's never enough. The devil requires more and more from you. And then when you go down that path and all of a sudden things are getting bad, really bad and dark, He's got a new drug for you or something new that'll make you feel good again. But it's digging a deeper and deeper grave. That's the problem with it all. And the, pretty much the end of the line is the Subutex and Adderall, in my opinion, because essentially you've got a John Belushi speedball, uh, only it's pharmaceutical grade, and it's probably not as deadly. But at the end of the day, it's doing the same thing, and it doesn't have all the negative effects. But pretty soon, your quantities are going up and up and up. And you're finding that you've maxed out to the point the high can't be reached anymore. And then what do you do? So, there's only one way out, and that's Yeshua HaMashiach, is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And it's bowing before him, submitting to him, admitting your sins, and begging for his blood covering his sacrifice that he made, the lamb that was slain. And it's also begging for the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, to indwell with you because as it says throughout the New Testament, you cannot go into heaven without the Holy Spirit. So you need that spirit. That being said, I prepared a little, a few words that say somewhat the same thing, but in a little bit more concise manner. So I'm going to read this to you. The other was just from the heart. Amen. All right, I'm calling this fighting for the future. Thank you, Yeshua, for a way out. And I said, oh, the flesh. As Paul writes, oh, the flesh, does it have any good thing in it? No. The quest for sobriety accompanied with joy as opposed to anxiety and depression. We're talking about the spirit and lust. They are polar opposites. Who is bold enough to even attempt such a feat when drugs have been a part of your life 24-7 for so many years, even decades, the drug, through hyperpolarization of dopamine neurons, having been so jacked up by opioids that your brain simply quits producing them. It doesn't need to because you're flooding the brain with them through your opioid use. And will not return to normal after you quit for months and months and months. Therefore, you go through withdrawals and you go through depression because your brain just quit making the dopamine.
In addition to the euphoric high of opioids, add Adderall to the mix. You've essentially concocted, again, a John Belushi pharmaceutical speedball, similar to heroin and cocaine, a.k.a. what killed John Belushi. When this concoction, this pharmaceutical cocktail, is pulsing through your veins and brain on the regular, I'm talking 24-7, 365, you feel like Superman as long as you can ever so slowly increase dosage over the years. But what happens when you are consuming elephantile dosages and your pharmacist bill, quote unquote, pharmacist bill, is passing six figures a year and the high isn't so great anymore. It's just getting you by shuffling through life a shell of what God made you for. And what happens when you're chasing salvation in the blood of Christ and you're scouring the Bible for hyper-grace verses of Scripture so that you can go to sleep while the still, quiet voice of the Holy Spirit is applying ever more conviction. But how can you quit? Your friends, quote-unquote, tell you it's impossible. And when you try to wean off from massive dosages, you become extremely sick, bedridden, and eventually suicidally depressed. So what do you do? You get back on them. How can you quit when your family needs you? And some, using much less dosages, claim they are clean six months and still depressed and essentially uselessly bedridden. So you tell yourself. Others tell you. You're stuck. There's no way out. Just accept it and tend to your family. But wait a minute. Back up a little bit. I've, been, I've read the Bible my whole life. I profess to be a Christian my whole life. I believe in Yahweh, Yahshua, as my Savior. I believe he purchased me with his blood. And I have the indwelling of the Ruach HaKodesh. Did he not create everything? Was he not made flesh and resurrected from the dead to save me from my sins? Did he not free Israel from Egypt? Plagues, Red Sea. Did not God empower Joshua to obliterate nations of giants? Did not he empower David to kill Goliath and tens of thousands of Philistines in hand-to-hand -hand combat? Did not the wall of Jericho fall after the shofar blast? Did not Jesus raise the dead, heal the sick, blind, cast out demons, and say, you will do greater works than me. And well, it goes on and on, but you get the point. It goes all the way through the Bible. Are we truly believers in the living God, our creator, Jesus Christ, the Father and Holy Spirit? Do we believe in the word of God? Do we have the faith of a mustard seed that can move mountains? Or do we put our faith in Egypt or in sorcerers of mystery Babylon? They're pharmakia and their dead idols well i decided to go with faith the living god yeshua yahweh and the ruach hakodesh and i pray to yeshua for mercy salvation forgiveness i pray for the fruits and gifts of the spirit i pray for a fear of yahweh and for Yahweh to spare and Yeshua to spare not his staff and rod when I meander from the straight and narrow path. I decided to clean my garments in his blood and accept his blood sacrifice and renounce all my sins and wicked deeds. I canceled my soul ties from my past. I was delivered of many demons for real. I felt them manifest as they were commanded out by the power of Jesus Christ. I begged for a triple portion of the Ruach HaKodesh. In 39 days now without drugs, I'm regaining my strength through the power of Jesus Christ, and I'm feeling the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling in my spirit. Thank you, Jesus. All power, glory, and honor to you, Yahshua. HaMashiach. <laughs>